As I go through this, I will step through it nice and gently, and please stop me at any point where you're like, whoa, it went too fast, okay? Now just eyes up for a minute, pen out of hand, because I want to point out something, well, two things actually. The first thing is, just have a look back at our original graph, I should have mentioned this earlier. Um, what is that new blue graph, what does it look like? It looks like a cubic, which is exactly what we should expect because you've got an, an x of some kind times an x squared of some other kind. So you're like, oh, it's x cubed, right? So you're like, cool, at least I've got the rough shape. Sometimes you'll start plotting some points and you'll make some numerical error by mistake. And then you'll be like, wait a second, this thing looks crazy, okay? You can use a very, very rough sense check to know you've got an overall shape. Now the second thing is when you look at this, you may, I would completely understand, to be honest, this is my reaction, I would completely understand if you looked at this and said, sir, Bit overkill, right? Like how many lines do you want to put on this? Now there is a very, um, I hope, very good reason why I put so many lines on um, and I'm going to try and justify that for you right now. On this graph I've put in that y equals 1 and that y equals negative 1 that we've done in the past because it's one of those sets of important values that ends up being very useful. I'm going to go all the way from left to right. Okay, so let's start over on this side. See how this y equals negative 1 is one of the graphs. See that? So I've got negative 1 times some other value, right? When you take some other value and multiply it by negative 1, what do you get? Negative, negative of that other value. Now what does it look like to you roughly? Five, five, five. Looks like roughly 5, 5.5. Five you could use a ruler, you know, to actually get that there. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to check that now. That looks to me like it's just slightly above 5. Okay, so therefore when I multiply that by negative 1, I should be down here just slightly, I guess, below negative 5, yeah? So I'm going to go ahead and the great thing about these vertical lines is they give you the place where that cross is going to go, right? It's going to sit on that vertical line. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cross there. And now moving from left to right, okay, have a look here. Um, I've got this vertical line matches to where this guy is 1, right? So one of the graphs is 1. When you multiply 1 by some other number, which is here, you get the other number, right? 1 times this, which I don't even know what it is. And I don't care. I'm just one times that is that. So I'm going to put a little cross in there. What's my next one over? What next vertical line do you see? What's happening here? What are the, what are the ordinates? Zero. Zero. The, both ordinates are, are zero when x is negative two, right? So I've got, oh, uh, yeah, I've still got my crosses there. There we go. There's a cross there. Uh, and I'm just going to keep on going, right? What's happening here? Negative one times this thing. It's the same thing. Will be negative of that thing. Now this you gotta be careful, you're like, oh that distance there, I'm just gonna go down lower. Okay, so you're like, oh it turns. Right? It's just like sort of wiggled around, right? Well that's the shape we're getting. Uh, I moved over, what am I getting here? One times that looks like negative three, doesn't it? Should be negative, negative three. You see you're starting to get the hang of it and how you don't actually need to know what the numbers are, you just need to know where they are on the graph. Like a snake. Okay? It is like a snake. <laughs> exactly right. Now I've cheated slightly here but you can actually do this on your page if you want. When I look over to my next vertical line, the next vertical line was supplied to me as the y-axis but you're like you've got two and negative four which jerks is not on the original graph that was supplied, right? So I've just gone ahead and I've gone a bit further. Two times negative four is negative eight, right? Down to 12. Uh, yeah, you can go as far as you like, right? You've got plenty of space on the page. But do please notice, my scale is consistent. That's vital, right? Scale is actually something very important here. Okay, I'm on the home stretch now. We'll do this a bit faster. So you've got uh, negative 1 times about 4, which is about negative 4. What's my next one over? My second last vertical line? Second last vertical line? Here? Yeah? In the same place. The ordinate is 0, so I'm going to go through 0. And then the last one is 1 times whatever is up there, which is whatever is up there. Okay, so now I've got a whole bunch of blue dots. Okay, now before I connect the dots, I just want to do one more thing. Do you remember when we were looking at uh, putting functions together, we often paid attention to the sign of those graphs, right? Positive or negative. And I'm going to do that again for this, it's going to be really helpful, okay? For example, just eyes up for me for a second. Have a look from here to the left, right? From here to the left. Do you notice the parabola is positive and it's always positive in this little area? And the straight line is negative. It's always negative to the left of this intercept, right? So can you tell me, irrespective of the size of these values, if you take a positive number times a negative number, what will the sign be? Yeah. 
negative. It'll be negative. It must be negative. So my new graph, my product graph, and I'd love it if you've got a highlight or whatever, is going to be negative in this area to the left of that intercept. I'm just going to color that in nice and carefully, like so. Positive times negative is negative. Good morning. Let's, uh, let's keep on going. What about here? What about in between here and here? You've got uh, this straight line. What's the sign? The straight line is... I'm looking at the ordinates, right? The y values. These guys are above. So that's positive, right? It's again positive times... What's down here? Negative. It's negative, isn't it? So I'm going to keep on shading in this negative space down here. Right, which is consistent with all of those crosses that I drew before, right? Did you notice that? And then the last thing is, have a look to the right over here. The parabola is now positive, and also the straight line is positive, irrespective of their size. If you multiply two positive numbers together, what will their sign be? Positive. positive. So lastly, I'm going to shade up here. So you can see our new graph is going to go all the way through these regions, all the way through those crosses. What do you reckon? You got a shape? Uh, this is going to be interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go sort of down, whoop, all the way down here. I'm going to do the left part as well. Like that. This is going to be super steep, isn't it? Really, really steep. Really steep. Steeper than I thought it was before. There we go. This needs some work, but you got the general shape there, and now I'm going to go clean th through it with a single line. What do you think? Does it match yours? You happy with that? Does again, does this match what we sort of expect? What kind of graph is this new one? What does it look like to you? It looks like a cubic, because again, I was doing a parabola times a straight line, okay? Now, just a couple of quick notes before we leave off. Um, please note, because it is a cubic, like these are smooth graphs. So you can see here, what are these shapes called again? Starts with an S. These are stationary points. So these can't be sharp. They can't be like pointy, even though it's quite hard to graph. You've got to make sure you have like a smooth part here, as all cubics do. Um, and then, yes, it is hard to do this part. It's almost like straight up, but you've got to make sure you hit those points that you marked in before. Okay?